All right, all right. Hi, everybody. Huh? <coughs> oh. Excuse me. All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, Peter here. I'm, um, I... <coughs> mm. Oh, excuse me. All right. All right, hi, everybody. Peter. 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 Peter <coughs> here. Peter here. I am, um, I'm doing some stippling here today. Just doing a little bit of stippling. It's, uh, doesn't hurt. Look, the main question I get with stippling for some reason is, how do you not hurt yourself over and over again? And I think the key is to take a lot of breaks. And I mean a lot of breaks. Like, every 30 seconds, stop for 5 seconds. Or stop for 30 seconds. Not just every 15 minutes, right? Personally, I call them micro breaks and they're kind of automatically worked into my workflow because I did this while streaming and so I would be like reading the the, the chat the, in, in the chat room and then I'd, so I'd, I'd do like a bunch of little dots and then I'd stop to talk and I wouldn't even be realizing that I'm taking a break but I would stop, I'd stop making all my little dots for a little while and that would be resting my hand and then I'd go back to making some more dots and then I'd stop to talk and then go back to making some more dots and before I realize it, I, I'd be drawing dots for 12 hours, and my hat, my hand wouldn't be hurting. But then, when I would be drawing without streaming for a little while, uh, my hand would start hurting so much faster, because I would stay on task, so to speak, so to say. And, uh, you know, I'd sit there and just intently be dotting for, you know, 1, 2, 3, 5, 10, 15 minutes at a time without any distraction at all, then that's when your hand really starts to hurt and ache. So I think breaks, just be nice to yourself, right? Breaks really are the key here. Anyways, this is probably one of the biggest, uh, most um, detailed stippling projects I've done in a long time. It's a 9 by 12 piece of paper, had a point thirty five um, tip size rotring isograph is what I'm using here. Basically, if I was going to give like a pro tip, or any beginner tips, pro or beginner tips for stippling is that just be willing to take your time and go as slow as you need to. Don't do stippling if you're in a hurry. Don't get the automatic dots pen from VAT19 or whatever. That thing's an abomination. You can draw and make art with it, but I wouldn't call that stippling. I would just call that something else entirely. It's You, you, you might as well be, be using a water balloon to stipple. It's just so, it's not, you need to be able when you stipple, place each dot as its its own little dot intentionally, slowly. It's its own thing. It's its own little drawing. And then as you go and as you get better at it, you'll be able to go faster. And you, you'll notice, and you can look at other people's drawings, when they go fast, when they rush it, the dots don't look like dots. They look like little lines, right? Because they're going too fast and they're rushing it. It happens to me a little bit, but I think I've gotten to the point where, for the most part, my dots are dots. I like it that way. Then, of course, I do fully acknowledge that, and and I, the the duality of dots and lines, which is that, dots are just short lines, lines that have the same length as they do width, and that lines maybe are just dots that went for a walk or just stretchy dots, right? So I don't think this out ahead of it all the time. It's still I'm still very doodle-minded. That's why I call it doodle-minded about this. I don't sketch out ahead of time. I just start putting the dots down there aimlessly. There's no... I don't... I don't it, if you put the dots down aimlessly, it starts to take, a, take shape by itself. It has a mind of its own. You put them down aimlessly, and you can start... You know, you blur your eyes a little bit or nod or step back a little, and you can kind of see shapes forming, like... Like, like I always say, like seeing things in clouds, start adding a few more dots, and and I mean, I, I don't know what's going to happen with the drawing, just as, as much as someone watching over my shoulder. I just watch things take form and take shape, and I kind of encourage it. Or, uh, But one mindset I do have is that I look, I kind of look at the piece of paper as like a flat piece of stone or granite, and then I imagine I'm, I'm carving it or sculpting it, right? And what if the my, t my pen tip is like some sort of chisel, and each time I put down a dot, I'm like chipping a little bit away, and when I put down like a bunch of really dense dots and make, make a really dense section where the, the drawing seems to sink back in there, um, I'm like making a really deep chunk, 
and chipping away at it really dense. And that's how it becomes kind of 3D. The, the, the parts where I don't put any dots, the, the blank white parts, those are the, the parts, the, the untouched surfaces of the stone. And then I kind of chip things away. And this, that makes me want to get like some, like a stone and, and actually try some sculpting, right? I wonder how hard that is. I want to look into it. I wonder if I can do it with like a, like a Dremel or something. Get some soapstone or something. Limestone. I wonder how it looks like. I got to look into that. Some sculpting. I don't know if I want to do like a big 3D sculpture, but just doing like, like something like this on like a big slab or a small, I'll probably start with a small slab. The word slab is nice. Hmm. Do you guys get what I mean though about the sculpting manner of this type of doodling? How I, I dig in with the dark parts and the white part is like, is that called negative space? I don't know all the fancy words untouched. You can make shapes by not drawing the shapes. Not sure. But like I said, it's all unplanned and I have as much fun watching all the shapes take form and appear as someone who doesn't know what the, what's going on and isn't in any control. I, I don't feel totally in control, which is kind of a fun thing. Even though I usually like drawing because I do feel in control. I mean, I could be in control if I wanted to, but I, like, I do like the fact that I can step back a little bit, place the dots there's a little bit of chaos there, and just I can just see what'll happen. Overall, this drawing took about 35 hours, but like I said, I took a ton of those tiny breaks. It didn't work, it didn't work super efficiently, um, but I think that's okay because it kept my hand from hurting. Didn't get any carpal tunnel or RSI, or my hand didn't explode from all the dots or anything. I personally have no idea how to estimate how many dots could possibly be on this piece of paper, but I did order one of those pedometers, like a step counter, a couple of them actually to try to like maybe tape them to the back of the pen for the next time I do something like this. Maybe they'll like count the dots somehow. I don't know. We'll try it. I'll try it, but we'll see what happens. Anyways, goodbye, everybody. Have a good one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.